look, my calculator is broken here. There is a broken key on this calculator. So let's say key one is broken and I'm wanting to get to a target number of 11. This is my target number. I need to figure out how I can have my total be 11 without pressing the one key because it's broken. So the question is, how can we make 11 without using this one? So this is a really good activity to be able to do with students of all different ages in your house. For example, if I'm working with a kindergartner or first grader, I can keep my numbers and my digits under 10, under 20. Well, your digits are all under 20 because the digit is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are our digits, and those digits together make numbers. So here, our target number is 11. And if one of your younger children at home says, I know, 11 is 10 plus 1. I really like the fact that they're working with tens. Our kindergartners and first graders, 10 is a very, very powerful number to work with. I would let them write this down or write this down for them and show that 10 plus one does in fact equal 11 and that's fantastic. But then we go and we ask, however, does it fit our rule? Will this work and why? These are two really good questions to ask. Will this work? And why? Okay, will this work? We're going to, and we'll test it here, press the one key, the zero key, and immediately they'll probably see that, oh, it can't be, whoops, because we just pressed the one key to make the 10 number. And then we also have to press the one key again. So that will not work. So then we can uh, think about other ways. Well, let me see. I have the ability to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's see if 13 minus two, that does equal 11. 13 minus two equals 11. However, will this work and why? This will not work, why? Because we did press the one digit. Now, this why is super, super important. We are asking students to justify their reasoning, which is a skill they're using with our mathematical practice from kindergarten all the way to high school. So this is very, very, very powerful. It might seem insignificant, but it definitely is not. It's, it's extremely important for them. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's, let's try and, um, let's keep with this subtraction theme. And let's try, if the tens position isn't working because that's 110, let's try the 20s. So let's work with 25. And here, this is some reasoning of why we're doing this. We're gonna work with the 20s. So 25 minus 14, let's see if that works. 25 minus 14, it's so fun to work with the calculator. We don't do it that often, so it's kind of a, novelty at times. Okay, so 25 minus 14 does equal 11. Will this work? Let's check. Our broken key for this example, and it might be a good idea to write this down, our broken key is one. So there's no one here, no one, a one there. That will not work. This way didn't work, this way didn't work, and this way did not work. So I'm going to draw on my knowledge about tens and ones. So this was the culprit right here because I have a one, one, 10, four. So let's make this two, 10, four and see what happens. So if I turn this into 24, which is also two tens and one and four ones, when we subtract, what this really means is the distance from one number to another number. So we had 25 to 14. What is that distance between? And that's 11. So if I change this to 24, I need to increase 25 by one group of tens to keep that distance the same. So 25 is going to go to 35. Let's double check 35 minus 24. And that does in fact equal 11. So this one does work. So we have found one way 
to get to our target number without pressing our broken key one. Okay, so let's get a little more creative with this and have some fun with it. Let's take three times three. And I'm gonna naturally use parentheses because that is what I'm doing first. I know that three times three is nine. So I could even do this, three times three, that equals nine. Okay, now how many more do I need to get to 11? I need two more to get to 11. Plus two equals 11. Will it work and why? Yes, it will work for two reasons. Reason number one, it does result in 11 as our total. And number two, broken key, there is no one key used at all. So that will work. So now we have two different ways. Let's see if we can come up with another way. And we can also say, how can we change this way? So I might do kind of the exact same thing. It might seem a little sneaky. It's actually quite smart. I'm gonna use my three times three. And then I'm going to break this apart. And I'm going to say, but I can't use one plus one because that would result in a broken key. So how can I get two? So I'm gonna add to seven minus five because seven minus five is the same as two, sneaky. So let's double check this. Three times three plus seven minus five equals 11. So this is another way to get this to get our target number. And parents, what we're naturally doing is we are naturally using parentheses and we're really understanding that this process right here is the same as this. So now that you know how to play broken calculators, here's a few more options. You have broken keys one, seven, and the plus symbol are all broken. Here are your target numbers to make. Or broken keys one, two, three, four, five, and six are all broken. And here are your target numbers. And this one is very different than the rest of them. Most of the keys are broken. The only three keys that work are number three, seven, and the plus symbol. And these are your numbers that you're making. So this is fun. It's supposed to be a lighthearted activity to discover and enjoy as a family. Have fun, enjoy.